Hello and welcome to new radio repair. Here we have Radeon or Radio One, however it's pronounced. One uh, nice little radio uh, from the late 20s or beginning of 30s, last century, uh, somewhere about uh, those years. I'll get more data and uh, see who has produced this radio. It does not have an uh, internal audio amplifier or loudspeaker. It's intended to be listened on uh, earphones. I guess that uh, this is one of uh, connectors intended uh, for, for this. It's interesting radio. Metal case. Dial is uh, still working. We're still far far away from uh, uh, running some electricity uh, through this radio. We'll see. When time comes, switch seems to be working. Uh, this dial is blocked. This one doesn't look good. It's interesting, this is uh, how it's uh, painted intentionally, like uh, crack paint. We'll see. It has a lot of dust. I definitely need to work on this. The oldest radio I worked on so far, so it's gonna be quite interesting. I truly hope that all of these tubes, just three of those, are working. No, four, sorry. Uh, four uh, electronic valves. I hope they are working. We'll see what's, uh, what's going on. First thing is to get a schematic, to find some data about this radio, uh, to see what uh, we can do and what will be approach for fixing it. I found some paper with this radio. I'll try to show you here. It seems that someone uh, wrote down which electronic tubes are in. We will see. Now I will search for some data. There is some schematic. Who knows what happened to that radio in previous decades. So now I will uh, look for data uh, to see what I can find on the internet and then I'll start uh, pulling out uh, tubes to check if uh, heating is, is correct, if those tubes are still uh, functional. I'll, first I will uh, turn the heating on if, if it's working on, on all tubes and leave it like this for maybe even 5-6 hours because uh, during this uh, time uh, this radio might be not in use, I don't know, maybe for 50 years or maybe even more so there is probably some small amount of air inside so I don't want to uh, put high voltage immediately on, on these tubes first I will uh, plug in just uh, heating voltage and leave them running like this uh, to burn out all the air if it's uh, if there is some inside and uh, then we will see how it will uh, behave with uh, with high voltage first to see uh, what uh, what we need to do to see the schematic to see how uh, we're gonna start uh, fixing this radio at least I'm quite sure it's gonna be very very interesting So far I've removed some screws from, from the bottom and from the side. There are a couple of more probably I will have to remove in order to, to release the front side of the radio. Now let's see what's inside. Okay, as expected. But inside doesn't look uh, bad. But I think there there will be a lot of stuff to be replaced. Okay, we will see. Some capacitors for sure. Uh, something has been oh already worked. This is not good because I have to determine where that wire is supposed to go. This looks new, at least newer than 
then other wires yep someone has been playing with this radio but that for sure wasn't recently we will see I can say that I made one wrong assumption about this radio and that is that fixing it or putting it into working condition is gonna be more or less straightforward and easy uh, now I can say that that's not gonna be the case I see some replaced wires these are newer ones not uh, the one that uh, were used in 1930s I got similar one over here like like this one this is 0.8 millimeter wire uh, usually used for telephones and this is uh, similar I think a bit uh, thinner but never mind uh, someone did uh, repair something here at least mechanic is uh, is good it uh, points straight to zero and you can see when I turn the dial one capacitor is closing another one is opening and on the front everything looks fine a little bit of uh, WD-40 to be applied on on these wheels and that's that will be pretty much it a lot of dirt as much as you want so I'm gonna clean this I see that this uh, tube has been taped so uh, that means that uh, the glass was probably uh, loosened up and uh, not connected well to, to the base of, of tube we'll see about those over here and let's put this out to see what's going on here just to put the cap back not to lose it okay we cannot remove this easily okay so now taking it apart what I can remove and um, pulling out tubes cleaning up the chases a little bit and taking a look what what part is what what it's used for and and so on and then I'll start uh, uh, tracing schematics from antenna and see if uh, there is something missing needs to be replaced and so on okay now tubes are out they're here inside I'll take care of those later and I'll check if um, if there is resistance uh, between uh, heating pins pins for um, connecting heating to, to these uh, tubes and if this is okay uh, then I'll proceed with more enthusiasm on, on fixing this it's quite interesting very rare parts and I need to be very careful with, the, with those tubes uh, it's gonna be very difficult to find a replacement and expensive after all if I manage to find any and this tube is also uh, quite interesting it says AS4100 and label on top of it check the top part says barium, barium tube so it has barium inside what it's used for not sure haven't seen those so far but it looks okay not cracked quite fine we will see it goes in here you can see that pins are asymmetric so uh, we cannot uh, place the tube back uh, on incorrect way and this is rectifier tube also very very simple uh, you can see that uh, these tubes are from from the beginning of tube era uh, not very uh, first years but uh, tubes advanced quite a lot later in later years and first I will clean this and uh, I'll check uh, the wiring for the beginning and before that I will check tubes of course 
and that's uh, that's pretty much it uh, for for today. I have searched for some data on uh, on internet and on uh, radiomuseum.org. I have found a couple of uh, images for for this radio. That's definitely the the type that I have. But when you look inside. I have these capacitors, I believe, over here, so someone probably added those in order to uh, to replace uh, most likely bad ones that that were uh, uh, on beneath but i will I'm quite actually glad uh, because I'm gonna remove this it's uh, it's very ugly. I will show you now again it's those two over here, so that is additionally added, probably also additionally mounted uh, with new holes for the screws here you cannot see them on other side I don't think that factory would do something like this schematic is quite simple take a look at it when you when you see this you think uh, it's intended for kids to be assembled in school but when you look at the radio itself it doesn't look so so it's gonna be a little bit of headache uh, to get everything uh, back in place and operational again let's see some details some technical details for this radio just to check uh, more images yeah that's that's definitely it definitely this radio oh that's interesting uh, probably fabric number that's um, in produced in, in Austria I think let me see uh, who created this? Um, don't see that uh, so far. Who knows? Maybe I'm looking at it, at it and don't see it. It doesn't matter. Uh, 480. Oh, yeah, th there it is. It's made in Austria. Cool. Uh, 1931. So that's like. Um, 91 or 92 years old at the moment it's also from from the same site and let's check this this is antenna input as you can see it has uh, many inputs over here and that is uh, in order to to adjust antenna it's uh, resistance to to the input uh, input circuit and this is first high frequency amplifier this is one variable capacitor let's say that it's this one here or maybe that one over here it doesn't matter at the moment but one variable capacitor is here another one is here and those are coupled those are coupled by these uh, these gears here how uh, there is a, a string over here actually not gears just um, just these uh, coils actually with this uh, steel wire and when we tune one capacitor other is, is tuned as well why is that when we tune this uh, to a frequency we, we want to receive that frequency only is gonna be amplified in in first tube E442 and then by inductive connection here it will be amplified in this tube as well but here we also have another oscillating circuit that will uh, produce uh, oscillations with with the higher amplitude and it goes again into uh, another amplifier here this triode E438 but as you can see part of this amplified signal is returned back into amplifier again and this is where we have this positive reaction but by tuning uh, I think this capacitor here and there is one small capacitor on the front I will show you that later by tuning this uh, capacitor we can regulate uh, how much of uh, output signal we want to put back into 
uh, into the oscillating cir circuit and grid one to be amplified again. If we put too much, then we will have self oscillations, so it will uh, start to whistle, and we don't want that. With this capacitor, we actually uh, regulate uh, amplifying and positive feedback in in this part. And after that, we have. Uh, low frequency part and amplifying audio signal over here in this pentode and that's it that's output for the loudspeaker actually for for the earphones and we have a small coil here probably to remove uh, remains of high frequency that uh, maybe eventually managed to get through all of these uh, parts here over here is um, rectifier, this is network, this is where we choose uh, the voltage, on this schematic is set to 125, uh, but we can see, we can see here that it's uh, set correctly for my voltage, it's on 220 volts. Nothing to to be uh, put on uh, voltage uh, right now on power supply. I will go now through through this schematic starting from the antenna input, and that is here. And it's also labeled. You cannot see it, uh, at the moment. Maybe now you can. Yeah, there it is. It says a four three two one E connector. We have that. Here a four three two one e connector. Cool. Now let's start following schematic and see uh, how everything is uh, connected. Where is that loose wire uh, going? Where it should uh, go actually? And try to replace some capacitors here. This is in uh, microfarads, but of course. On this radio, all capacitors are in centimeters, labeled in centimeters, so I will have to convert that, uh, but that's not uh, not difficult. Right now, I'm still in cleaning phase, so I started to remove uh, rust from, from the traces. You can see now this uh, basically bare metal, uh, but it's quite uh, high quality paint, I can say, because uh, it's it's very hard to remove it. I even uh, I brushed it, and it's uh, it stays intact after 90 years. That's uh, that's amazing. I have removed uh, this part and cleaned it a little bit. This uh, aluminum protective case, and here we can see antenna coil. And one interesting thing is that I found inside this uh, this paper. It was put inside and it is uh, recently uh, drawn someone draw a schematic of, uh, of antenna and uh, where it is uh, connected so okay it's uh, it's good I I know where some uh, pins are getting directly on on this antenna coil but this also means that someone was trying to repair it recently or whatever uh, they did so I just hope uh, that um, uh, they did not cause uh, much uh, more damage whoever was repairing this because this is this is not old this is relatively new I just hope that uh, they gave up on, on repairing uh, but we can see uh, it's uh, starting uh, starting to shine and I'll now start to uh, clean the uh, bottom side of uh, of the chases and after that I'll switch to to dial and these capacitors and then I'll start uh, repairing it. Now we are under the hood. The fun part begins and I'm starting from power supply. As you can see it's a pretty much mess and okay someone tried to make some kind of insulation here but poorly here as well. This is switch for turning it on and off. Uh, still working like a charm, very soft, not uh, loud. Quite nice, quite nice. 
for 90 years old switch that is good uh, what I don't like is uh, having wires going like this through the chases and this is uh, these are wires that are going to uh, conduct 220 volts I don't like when it's uh, touching chases like this although it has insulation of course uh, it's not a good practice at, at least by my opinion so I'm gonna add some additional insulation here and I will replace these wires of course and I'll try to group them as much as I can so this is my my next task I have um, measured resistance here it's like uh, 200 ohms so uh, this transformer is uh, most likely good and soon I hope I will be ready to power it up and to see how how that performs of course no tube is plugged in so we won't have a high voltage uh, DC we won't have DC high voltage and uh, that's it that's uh, step one it's always good to do a double check maybe even triple check of uh, wiring before plugging in into high voltage uh, the radio uh, what I did uh, is checking these two wires that red and green one they are leading to a light bulb there it is uh, should be like 4 volts of alternating of AC over there and these two were basically connected together in short circuit but uh, they had a tape on so I I couldn't see that until I removed uh, the tape so if I would plug it in like this that would make a short circuit there are no fuses on this radio uh, not a single one so we would put in danger this um, transformer power supply transformer so I checked all the wiring inside you can see uh, what kind of a interesting mess that is there is also one wire that's disconnected I need to trace that down to find uh, find out where it goes also uh, this like main lead wire uh, had connection with this transformer it was touching it touching this uh, uh, this screw over here from the inside so uh, that could also uh, make some uh, short circuit so now I will plug it in just for a quite short period of time that looked nice it gives nice sound I mean transformer it's not buzzing a lot just as it should when no nothing is uh, pulling power from it that was nice it's not heating up it's quite cold so okay this is it now I gonna replace these wires they are in quite bad condition and you can see what what kind of a mess uh, we have here so I'll just replace those wires uh, remove these original one completely because they are not safe to use anymore that's uh, that's for sure and basically these are going to be all the following steps uh, removing bad connections uh, tidying up a little bit uh, all of these connections replacing capacitors that I have immediately to to replace here and then I will um, deal with uh, rectifier I'll place back um, uh, the tube if it's uh, if it's okay and then I'll start with measuring uh, DC voltage now to test high voltage I have replaced wires for a light bulb for the dial and that works it works just well I tested it and I did a little bit of rewiring because one wire for um, for this light bulb was taken somewhere from over here and there is the same pin basically quite close uh, to another uh, another pin from which we ta are taking voltage for for the light bulb so there is no need to pull that wire all through over there uh, just taking the the shortest path as as I can but okay that's that's not very important now I have connected voltmeter 
right now it's uh, not plugged in radio is not plugged in and I'm measuring voltage basically across this capacitor here I will show you where is that on schematic so these are these two points that one and that one as and as it says 200 uh, sorry 2000 centimeters uh, multiplier is I think uh, 1.11 something like that uh, to get um, into uh, farads so this capacitor here is uh, 200, 2,000 and 200 picofarads so that is that is okay that that's just uh, about the right value and uh, regarding this capacitor I immediately recognized uh, that it's uh, it has been replaced that that is not original one this logo is from uh, Telekomunikacije Ljubljana uh, ex Yugoslav company now uh, it's actually from Slovenia uh, they were making radios and other electronic equipment as well so the, but it's quite old it's also from from tube radios okay uh, now just to plug it in but as you can see the switch I have taped it uh, because it's very easy to to touch the chases or anything else uh, near uh, near this switch so that could be quite dangerous it's always on and I will just uh, plug it in now to see what it measures 322 volts 23 that's okay as we can see light bulb is okay so we are getting 322 let's say with network power uh, voltage sorry of 220 volts so uh, that would be that would be okay if you have noticed this radio does not have electrolytic capacitors everything is with tri capacitors I'm really eager to see how it sounds I hope that everything will work and I want to hear the original sound of such old radio to see how that uh, goes I have managed to determine a couple of things for this radio what needs to be replaced and removed as well I don't like this part over here how it's uh, it's wired as you can see everything is loose and it can easily get in contact with other uh, elements and this is high voltage part that's a high voltage part this is uh, this wire goes directly from uh, output transformer that's like 300 volts uh, getting here and I've also determined what are these used for these are, these are external capacitors as you can see this one is definitely not for for use anymore it it looks like uh, it exploded just to focus it yeah there it is so that's that's getting out and it has been additionally added this is not uh, original part for this radio there are two capacitors here this one and that one uh, lower one has this green wire and I found where it goes it connected here and the other one goes here and where is that on schematic uh, there is this one it actually represents this capacitor one goes to the heating of uh, tube 1800 uh, that's a rectifier and we have actually here two capacitors uh, connected in parallel one is that one which is one microfarad uh, that's not definitely original capacitor uh, for radio this, this old it should be labeled in in centimeters and that Siemens mark uh, probably uh, pulled over from some other radio and this one is added in parallel so I will uh, I will see uh, to replace both of those so I'll probably get another uh, some other newer capacitor to replace that one and I will remove uh, this one uh, over here I'll check uh, connection for the other uh, remove that as well and that I will completely remove this one and I will rewire uh, this part here but in a manner of uh, 1930s, you, you will see how that connection 
uh, will be performed. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, connecting method I, I used to see in Philips radios from uh, uh, this period. Couple of capacitors has been replaced, and these one are removed now. You can see how that looks like. It's definitely for the trash. Cannot be used anymore. I even tried to measure capacitance of this uh, this bottom capacitor that looks pretty much intact, but uh, it's showing huge losses. So uh, no use of this capacitors. They are literally go to trash immediately and that's it everything is starting to look better this is where where they were it's uh, much cleaner now of course I will probably repaint this later but when we get to that so far so good this is one small capacitor uh, that is used for uh, regulating feedback and on schematic that's uh, right here it's not working. Uh, it basically you you cannot uh, adjust anything. It's stuck, so I have to to open it and to see what's uh, what's the issue with this. It should be 200 centimeters, so it's uh, for fine adjusting of feedback. But we will see when I open it. I'll probably see immediately what's uh, what's the issue with it so next step uh, let's fix this one uh, so we can fine-tune uh, frequency and feedback later and then I will deal with uh, these wires that are going um, basically like like a mess to to these two capacitors for uh, tuning radio to radio stations there it is now opened what basically happened it it got stuck because of all the dirt inside and grease that turned into some kind of glue in the meanwhile uh, I have to clean it and that's that's it I'll clean everything uh, in the middle between these uh, these plates these are uh, static plates I hope I'll be able to assemble that back as it was you can see a lot of oxidation here and it's not uh, unusual I mean it's in excellent shape considering that is uh, 90 years old but okay uh, I'll now start cleaning this uh, it's gonna be a, uh, a little bit difficult to, to assemble that back uh, but nothing nothing special we'll see it will work that's for sure and then I'll try to measure its uh, its capacitance to see uh, if it's okay but no reason not to be and I'll put it back after that I will start dealing with this mess of wires none of those is original those are telephone wires I have new one here but I'm of course not using it for for this purpose uh, I will rewire that using different wires we will see how it's gonna turn out to be at the end and finally I'll repaint as much as I can of, of the chases to bring some nice look again bring it back and that's it let's start dealing with this capacitor and moving further on as I said on um, tuning part there's our capacitor cleaned assembled back it wasn't that difficult at least it's working working normally I managed to measure a hun about uh, 150 picofarads so that's uh, that's about it since it's for fire tuning I guess that uh, that will do the job okay now since this is done cleaned working smoothly if you remember I couldn't move that at all but now it goes as you see with one hand 
Uh, now to deal with uh, with these wires, with this mess here. This is uh, one capacitor made by Orion, I guess Hungarian radio company. Uh, they used to make radios. It's uh, labeled 200, 200 centimeters. Uh, that's uh, its capacity. If you want to uh, turn that into farads or picofarads, you have to multiply it by 111. So that would uh, give us like uh, 220, 222, as you wish. Um, Pico farads. Uh, I disconnected this capacitor from here. It was connected to grid one and to one um, end of of the coil. If we look at the schematic, where is that? That's this capacitor over here that is connected connecting grid one and this coil. So what I want to do with it is to measure its uh, capacitance uh, to see how good that capacitor is. Uh, it's not high voltage here, so I can easily replace it with any new capacitors that I have. Uh, I have a couple of uh, 100 picofarads, so I'm going to couple two of those uh, to get 200 uh, picofarads, and that that is uh, going to be enough. There is no high voltage here, as you can see, coil is connected to the ground, and it has um, inductive. Um, connection with the with the rest of the circuit so no high voltage and that's good as you can see uh, these are probably uh, waxed layers of uh, thin aluminum foil inside and I want to check uh, what is the capacity of this capacitor as I already said uh, for this I'm gonna use this universal bridge and that universal bridge is uh, set to measure capacitance at a moment and it actually works uh, quite simple first you need to determine the range where you're gonna measure capacitance and then you tune this dial uh, to read a dip with the, within this uh, uh, millivolt microvolt meter actually so uh, needle needs to be somewhere in uh, in the bottom area of this uh, red uh, red area here so uh, I'm gonna connect this capacitor now and let's check uh, how it behaves there it is now connected this bridge can measure up to a couple of picofarads so this wire is uh, not gonna uh, not gonna be a problem for measuring 200 uh, picofarads so we can ignore the capacitance of this this wire it's switched to C that is capacitance so we are measuring capacitance it's also uh, can measure inductance and uh, resistance and now determining the range uh, this switch needs to be in low position low sensitivity uh, not 10 kilohertz let go with one and what is the correct range that is when we get the needle uh, somewhere in in red uh, in red area and that it that is here now we switch to high sensitivity and looking for a dip okay there there is one just to focus but very very mild what this means? This means that uh, this capacitor probably has uh, high losses, so we're gonna switch to 10 kilohertz. This is the frequency that we're gonna use to measure capacitance now, and looking for another dip. Okay, I'll tune just to show you what I'm doing. I'm tuning this dial to to read a dip here, and let's see where it gets the lowest value it's somewhere here and that's just about the capacitance that is uh, actually declared for for this resistor but one thing is not uh, sorry for this capacitor but one thing is not good uh, we're not in red area and that is where we should be what this means is that uh, this capacitor has uh, extremely high losses so it's not going to be good for uh, high frequency usage and as you can see on schematic 
it's uh, conducting high frequency signal from this coil just to the grid one so uh, this signal signal that goes through this, capac uh, this capacitor should be amplified and the capacitor itself is going to bring a lot of um, attenuation to, to the signal so we definitely want to, to replace it uh, I already took a couple of capacitors these are um, two capacitors of 100 picofarads connected in parallel so now I will connect uh, those here and I'm gonna measure capacitance of, of these two so you will see how how that look like looks like with the uh, brand new capacitors so the same procedure has been repeated for for these two uh, the range is set and now all I have to do is to uh, turn the dial actually range uh, multiplier now we are at uh, 100 picofarads and if I get 2 I just multiply by 2 and I get 200 picofarads so pay attention to, to the needle and take a look when it gets uh, down there it is you see how it's now uh, now gets close to, to the zero basically so we're looking for that dip to stay in the dip there it is and that is uh, 190 picofarads uh, I'm showing you now with all three capacitors uh, what I managed to to measure because it was very very sensitive so there is no point of uh, watching me how I tune this for a couple of minutes literally but uh, here it is uh, that is that is quite nice for for the reading and now we have 250 picofarads here so that's just uh, 30 picofarads above the value that we need actually a bit less than uh, 30 picofarads so I'm quite satis satisfied with, uh, with that so what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to use all of those three capacitors just to switch this off and I'll put those into into this foil actually and I'll fill it up probably with uh, hot glue using hot glue gun with plastic actually and I'll put it back here so original look will be preserved as much as uh, as possible now we can compare previous look of capacitor and how it looks now there it is it's sealed inside using hot glue gun nothing special but now can be replaced I'll put it back where it was and you can see the inside of original capacitor now sorry uh, that there it is this is not in for use anymore of course it's uh, literally falling apart and it has extremely high losses so uh, it's not good for basically for anything so th that's going to trash and I gonna use these new one they are roughly 200 centimeters so so this is fine and at least we have a label so we will know later for example if we need to do something again and that's it now putting it back and there's one thing I, I need to show you that's a wire about 0 0.8 millimeters that was uh, connected from the output tube I think the last HF tube yeah the last HF tube uh, to the capacitor variable capacitor and just take a look how long that was that's like nearly half a meter some something like this and that was here all wrapped up and it was going I think here to this variable capacitor and other wires are not much better I cannot imagine why someone would do something illogical like this 
this is high frequencies and absolutely no sense to uh, to put such long wires and then to push them uh, all together but um, I, of course now I'm replacing those one by one uh, I need to fix uh, this mess here as well uh, that is antenna coil again and capacitor has been replaced a capacitor that goes to grid 1 and that's a tuning coil for a feedback regulating uh, high frequency amplifying and these are all for the primary HF circuit for tuning the radio nothing special now to tell about it just to replace those wires with the much shorter of course